Good morning, family. Uh, it's, it's good to be uh, with you again this morning. Um, I, I really want to share something with you that's really been weighing on my heart, uh, so much so that, that God reiterated uh, this again this morning in prayer. And, and that is this, uh, this great falling away that we're seeing within the church. And we're seeing it at alarming rates, specifically in the millennial uh, generation. Um, the Pew Research, I'm going to throw a stat at, at you. Uh, the, the Pew Research Center says that, that now uh, millennials are almost as likely to say that they are non-religious as they are to identify with uh, as being a Christian. Uh, that means that um, if you were to run into a millennial, it would be a toss up whether they if you were to ask them whether they would say, yep, I, I, I believe in Christ and and I go to church on a routine basis as opposed to um, they 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 may say that, uh, no, I don't go to church. I don't even feel like church is important to me. I don't feel like God and and faith, uh, whatever that, that, that thing is, that none of that adds value to my life. Uh, it's a toss. up. It's a 50 50 shot. Um, and that's that 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 is that is crazy. Uh, and, and to, to, I'm gonna throw another stat out, out at you. It, it also says that um, that of those non-affiliated, non-religious uh, millennials, uh, when they marry, they 74% of them marry uh, spouses that are or have spouses that are also non-religious. Um, that means that this 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 downward trend that we're seeing in the church, right? This decline. Um, if we don't do something to um, flatten the curve, so to speak, uh, this 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 downward trend is only going to continue to perpetuate. It, it's only going to get worse from here. And this is important because not only are millennials uh, the church of today, but we are the church of tomorrow because. Um, the mantles are now being passed down to us. We have this this awesome responsibility to continue uh, continue these religious practices and continue uh, drawing people uh, to, to to God. Um, we that's an awesome responsibility. But half of us at, between the ages of twenty three to thirty eight, half of us are are. are identify as being non-religious and, and, and that will continue. But the thing is, is that we've known this for a long time. As church leaders, we, we've done a lot to really try to uh, draw millennials in. We, we've um, we've uh, changed our program, our, our worship programming. We've um, we've added light shows or even dim the lights or we, we transition for from uh, traditional worship style to contemporary worship styles. We we've even relaxed our dress codes, even in the Pentecostal church. We've relaxed our dress codes um, all in the name of uh, of winning or drawing um, millennials back to the church. But I would propose to you that it's not about technology. It's not about um, uh, the, 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 the religious practices or the rules and regulations. It's, it's not about whether your lights are on or, or whether you have it dark in your sight. It's not about any of that. I would venture to say that the problem is, uh, is, is with the people. Um, specifically, there's two people that there's two uh, types of individuals that I want to speak on uh, this morning. Um, the first is uh, are those individuals who uh, who lack the empathy for others. Uh, they they uh, they are unwilling to um, understand or even try to understand someone else's situation. Um, particularly those individuals who maybe maybe they are they've just been invited or maybe God has been pricking their heart and they are new to the church uh, or new to coming to church and they're new to this committing their life their, their lives to God uh, they are new to um, to to trying to surrendering and they're new to this walk there 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 there's some that are newborn babes in Christ and these folk these individuals who are who don't have any empathy they are trying to lord uh these the these these rules and regs over uh these uh these these babes 
uh, heads. Uh, they, they're trying to cause them or, or try to get them to live up to this high standard that none of us are able to, to live up to as if they are perfect, as if they don't have a blemish on the record, as if they came out the womb um, speaking in tongues and dancing and shouting. In fact, they feel like their their first words were not dad, dad, and mama, but their first words were hallelujah or, or Jesus or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but they are they they are uh, unempathetic um, with um, with others. Uh, that's the first individual. That's the first individual. The second individual um, are those who um, uh, uh, who are, are no different than the world. They, they they're supposed to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and all of that. But they uh, but there's no difference. And, and let me explain that. Um, the world comes into the church, but they see the same foolishness in the church as they deal with outside the church. They they still they come in the world comes in the church and they're dealing with gossiping. They're dealing with people talking about them behind their back. They're dealing with they they're dealing with cussing saints. They're dealing with sipping saints. They're dealing with with with, with dipping saints. Those saints that that that's supposed to be Holy Ghost filled and, and living uh, living holy lives. The the same saints are are, are sleeping around. And Having extramarital affairs, these these, these same uh, folks who's supposed to be uh, who supposed to be God's representatives in this land are, are the same ones that when the, uh, a young lady walks by with 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 with, with nice curves and, and and her her outfit fits her right in all the right places, they're cutting their eye and following her as she walks by. Uh, the world comes in the church and, and, and because God has drawn them in. But when they come in, they're, they're like, why do I need what you what you say you have? But you're, there's no difference in you than, 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 than what I know that's in me. They, 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 they have no desire to, to, to come in because the same, like I said before, the same foolishness that they're dealing with outside the church, they now come in and they deal with it, although it might be dressed up, but they're dealing with the same foolishness within the church. And, and this is what God brought back to my, my mind or he reiterated to me this morning. Um, and and he, he brought it back to me as I was reading Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 22. It says, therefore, or give uh, the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I am bringing you back, but you, but, but not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. Uh, just to give you a brief background, uh, uh, Ezekiel is a prophet he, and, and, and uh, the Israelites have been exiled and they're in Babylon in the Babylonian captivity. Um, and in, in chapter six, um, uh, Ezekiel prophesies that, that the mountains and the lands would become wastelands and deserted and God would, would destroy or allow other nations to come and destroy. It. Now, in verse 36, he's now speaking a, of a restoration that is going to happen, not just in the land, but he was also going to regather the people. But find, we find here in verse 36, he says, God says, I'm not doing this because of you, but I'm doing this to restore my good name in the land because you have shamed it. In other words, uh, the people that were in captivity, they were supposed to um, they were supposed to witness their lives were supposed to witness, but they had assimilated to the cultures and the rituals and practices of the foreign lands. And what, what I'm saying to you is so many of us, we are supposed to, as believers, as blood-bought believers, we are supposed to be Christ ambassadors within this land. Yes, we are sojourners, but we are supposed to represent Christ. But too many of us, those of us that, that have no empathy, those of us that have that 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 are that continue to follow after the pattern of this world, we are misrepresenting Christ. Christ in this land. And, and, and God says, I'm tired of you shaming me. I'm tired of you uh, uh, defiling my name. I'm tired of you um, making uh, or desecrating my name. You have to, we supposed to be salt and light. We are supposed, there should be a distinct line of demarcation that separates us uh, from the world. When the world comes in, there's supposed to be something within us, that light shining in us that's supposed to draw 
draw people, not just light, but the love of Christ that should draw people. When people come in, the, the saints supposed to be happy. They shouldn't be trying to dress them down or dress them up uh, when, as soon as these new believers come in the church. We are supposed to wrap our arms around them and, and, and help them to get to the place that God uh, desires for them instead of uh, instead of dressing them down. Um, and, 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 and so uh, and so the Bible says uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the way that we uh, love what we have love for one for the uh, other. We are supposed to love um, others the way that we love ourselves. Um, that that's 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 one of the the uh, one of the two biggest commandments. Right. Um, we are supposed to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We are supposed to. Um, help others in need. Um, be willing to step out there and help others in need, but we are not there. We are failing big time. Not all of us. Some of us are not, 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 not that we're perfect by no means, but some of us are doing a great job. We can do better, but some are doing a great job. Those individuals who, who sit in or live in those two categories I spoke about earlier, um, you know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, I pray on this week that you will look yourself in the mirror and do a self-examination. This is a hard one to share this morning, but this is what God placed on my heart. Um, uh, we have work to do, serious work. We have kingdom work to do, um, and we're missing the mark because we're being selfish, because it's all about us. It's all about my feelings. It, it, it's so much so I feel like I got every feeling I, that I have. I feel like I have to go express it on Facebook. Sometimes we have to keep our mouths uh, closed um, because that's what the world, the world are the, the world are, are, they're the ones that, that go and express all their feelings and, and they go, they, they go and make sure everyone knows every thought that's running through our, through their minds. Uh, we're not supposed to, we, we are supposed to be sober minded and, and have restraints, self restraints. But nevertheless, we are following after the pattern of this world. We have to um, pray and ask God on this week to conform our hearts to his. Um, make us better. That's our prayers to make us better. And, and by no means tomorrow we won't be perfect. Next week we won't be perfect. But if we continue to seek the Lord and ask him to help us, uh, God will take us through a process, a journey by which uh, day after day we will get better. And he will use us to draw others in uh, to the kingdom. And that is our purpose here in this earth. Uh, I pray that, uh, as I said before, you know, this is a hard one to share this morning, but this is, you know, this is what uh, this is what God laid on my heart. And um, I have to put it out there. Um, but I just prayed that um, you will receive it in the uh, in the loving fashion uh, that it was intended. Um, but saints, we got to do better. Church, it's time for us to stand up and uh, be the change agents that God has called us to be. I love you and I appreciate each each one of you. Um, and we pray uh, peace and blessings over over every last individual this morning. And if God says the same, we'll see you back here again next week. God bless.